rarely does anyone, even scientists, get to see the inside of a dinosaur tooth. Hey everyone, welcome back to another unboxing. You've got Rebecca and Tom here, per usual. Tom has brought us some really cool things to unbox. So on this one, it's a touch, don't look. Don't worry, I won't bite. Okay, well, that does not increase my confidence here. Okay. Okay, there's a lot. It's like, oh, there, that's sharp. It kind of feels like gravel a little bit. Well, bite, are they teeth? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys have to see that. It is a box full of teeth. Yeah. Ah, it hurts. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so they're teeth. Are they shark teeth? These are shark teeth. So this is just a representation of a clue of what we're gonna be looking at today. Okay, well, I knew that they were shark's teeth because nothing else quite has that type of triangular shape. Yeah. Like it comes to a point like that and is that small. I mean, the only other thing that would kind of even resemble this a little bit would be like arrowheads. Wow, that was not a very nice shark. No. That's a big shark. Well, I think what we're kind of gonna be looking at today is gonna be things that may have been not so nice as well, okay. and things that we'll kind of review. So I've got these all laid out already, and the main reason is because it's delicate material. Why don't you just go ahead and pick a box at random, they're in no order whatsoever, okay. and we'll start talking about I them. I love it. All right, I'm gonna choose this one. Once you see what it is, yeah. you have to have a little bit of delicacy with it. Yeah, okay, so it's another tooth. Yep. But it's fossilized. It's a fossilized dinosaur tooth. Oh my gosh. Yes. And the thing that's important to note with these, and these are for sale, everything that you're gonna see here in this whole segment is going to be for sale. They're extremely fragile, but it's yeah. also important to note, we really don't know what species these are. Okay. From what you see out on the market of dinosaur teeth, these are in really good shape. Okay, so why is it that we don't know the species? Do we not know enough about each dinosaur species teeth. This was harvested at a time in Madagascar that, you know, a lot of science hadn't gone into the identification of. Okay. The one thing you do know about this is it was a carnivore. Yes. Right? Now, we have a few in the description where it will say from a meat eater. Okay. Cuz that's But what's cool. interesting is the tooth that says it's from a meat eater doesn't look like this. Oh, is it like no. I would but say I that would it, say is, it is. Because right? it's our canines that right. set us apart. Right. So, yes, I would say that it's from a meat eater. We do our due diligence here with everything when we bring it in. So I brought this in to our advanced testing specialist, Caleb. So I was like, tell me there's no plastic, no polymers. I, I wanna feel good. And I went back a couple hours later and he said, everything checks out, it's organic. Everything hits all the right boxes. And he goes, I sent this to a paleontologist friend of mine. And he said, where did you get that? They also said they thought maybe it came from a Tyrannosaurus. A lot of okay, deep stuff in there. Okay, how cool though. Yeah, I know. I love that. Okay, I'm just gonna keep opening. Each one is so unique. And oh it's important to note these are all one onlys. The second one, you picked my favorite. And that is too cool, I can see yeah. why. And you know, something that I saw on this that I also see on this are like layers, kind of. Yeah. Like it almost reminds me of rings on a tree. It almost is like when you see rock growth, and you can see different ages and eras of time. I had talked to someone who used to do a lot of archeological work that worked here and asked, you know, can we date these to figure out how old they are? And he just shrugged and he said, the best you're gonna do is figure out the age of the material that replaced the tooth. We know they're old, like we know they are. So, we just don't have an exact date. They're almost like- Serrated? Serrated, yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful color. Yeah, the patterns and colors that come really off these pretty. are just gorgeous. Okay, so we should talk about what a fossil is because mm. there's a difference between a tooth mm -hmm. and a fossilized yes. tooth. And in short, a fossil is just a replacement with certain minerals of the original materials. So you mentioned the dinosaur tooth falls out, it gets maybe embedded into the ground and sediment, any soft part of it might decompose. And then over time, materials replace anything yeah. that wears out of it. It's replaced with, you know, everyday elements, iron, calcium, silica, and it's gonna be more durable 
concentration so that you get something like that. And in some instances, it can be replaced with things like pyrite or opal. Yeah. And then you have these really, you know, either vibrant colors or really cool patterns or things like that. I actually really like that one because speaking of the replacements, like you're getting a lot of different color variation there. It really is something to appreciate and behold that it was able to come out of the ground in one piece and we're able to hold it in our hands today. It's so cool. Now, Tom, why would one collect dinosaur teeth? There could be a lot of reasons to do it. It's kind of interesting with a lot of collectors, they don't know how to answer that question. It could be that you've always had a fascination with dinosaurs. These are historical record. When you really look at it, a collection almost always begins with just, it catches your eye, you're interested in it, you wanna touch it, mm -hmm. you wanna feel it, because everyone that we bring out, and even as you look at it, you kind of run your finger across that serrated part, and you think to yourself, this ripped something to shreds uh, at this, some point. This one is scary. Yeah, it really is. And they're just really unique and fascinating, whether you're, a six-year-old or a 60-year-old, someone's gonna have the same reaction to this no matter what. It's gonna generate so much conversation. It might take you down a path of your life that you didn't know that you ever wanted to do. It, it could make an archeologist out of you, a paleontologist. There's so much that can be found. What's cool about this is you don't see dinosaur teeth in everyday workplace situations. They're reserved for really special places. Well, they really are. Like most times, most people won't see a dinosaur tooth outside of a museum. I mean, that was the first time I ever saw a dinosaur bones, any kind of, right. you know, museum quality pieces. And I feel like these are museum quality pieces. If you're a collector, you're really preserving this and carrying yeah. it on because you're now the steward of this piece. These are really cool. So which one do you think is designated as the meat eater? Well, because you said it, I'm guessing this one because it's the most blunted. Yeah. But that's crazy. I like, for sure, I would not have originally guessed that. No. I would have guessed basically any of the other ones. These are extremely fragile. If you want to display these, no tape, no tack, no anything. I actually have a piece here that I'm going to show you. This is what happens when you use tape on these. Oh no. And because they are old, they are delicate, they're very fragile. Out of everything bad that could happen, something good comes out of it. Very rarely does anyone, even scientists, get to see the inside of a dinosaur tooth. So you can see that yeah. end there. They can study the structure of the dentin on the inside of it, all this white. Yeah. That stuff no one ever gets to see. You can even see like in this. So the way this one has that line yeah. going across it, you can see where it would be very easy for this to start separating and come apart. But it's the things you don't think about that really will damage them. Yeah. The wonders of what's under the ground that don't get faceted into a gemstone. That That is just too cool. I'm actually really fascinated by the broken one. All right, another box. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's a Meg. That is a Meg. That's a yes. Megalodon. I know that one. Okay, so a shark, which is really scary, and a Meg. Yeah, this is a little surf and turf action. Like, <laughs> yeah. we had the turf already, oh and now gosh. we're onto the surf. Okay, yeah, this is really cool. I just really cannot believe that this is actually a tooth. Whenever I show stuff, I always show it against my hand, just so you can see relative mm -hmm. size. So, with the Megalodon tooth, against the standard issued Midwest stock hand. That is still a huge tooth. Well, in fact, the word Megalodon comes from the Latin big tooth. Most of you probably know Megalodons no longer exist. They probably were most recently on the earth three million years ago, so they're prehistoric. That's still too close for me. That's too close. I don't like that. Real quick, differences between these and the dinosaur teeth. I, this is much heftier to me. It's like it has a really solid ore attached yeah. to it, like iron or some sort of metallic something, because this does, definitely does not appear to be as delicate as the dinosaur. I mean, my biggest takeaway from it is those lines across the front of the tooth. Like, it just feels so cool. Yeah, because to see all of those go down, and it looks like it's just an extension of what's in the black up here. It yeah. really feels so unique. Like, can you imagine that at the end of a spear? I don't want to imagine this being any more weaponized than it was inside <laughs> of that shark's mouth. 50 feet of pure terror. You I open. have no idea. You open. Why? After that last one? Let's, uh, one, two, three. Oh yeah, oh. okay, cool, okay. This is fine. Oh my good, oh that's. Got a lot of hair. Is it like a fossilized egg? It's made of fossilized dinosaur bone. 
Wait, how cool is that? All of these circular openings really are openings. All of the material isn't flush against this surface. No. Like you can, there's depth there. And that's kind of the thing is a lot of times when you see like fossilized bone, they'll call it agatized. Yeah. So just like with fossils, it's a replacement material. So that's what you're seeing in all these holes. I like all of this unique material because I go to a lot of different trade shows. I don't see this stuff that often. Yeah. And again, from a display perspective, it's so easy to display. Yeah, and it's gonna be something too that when someone comes into your home apartment, they're gonna wonder what that is. The way you would tell if this were an agatized piece is just to really look with detail into all these openings to yes. see if you see any curvature or any kind of banding. We have another box sitting oh over here. Gosh, you want to take okay. a look? Yeah. All of these are kind of bubble wrapped because they are fragile. We just, <gasps> ooh, I saw ooh. the color. So this is a hot piece when you go to trade shows. This is an ammonite. This is an ancient sea creature. This or wherever this originally ended would be where the actual body would have come out of. And as you can see, there's iridescence on the shell. So this has been fossilized. We were talking earlier yeah. about the different elements that can replace these materials to create the fossils. And here you have elements that create this iridescence. So you have a variety of replacements going on that create a certain amount of light reflection and refraction yeah. and, and therefore you get these awesome colors. Iridescence and play of color it really is one of the great things about gemology and this is just such a beautiful piece. To think that a lot of times you'll have broken material in this and that's what you find, the little chips, yeah. but to have a full piece like this with good size that it has, this is a great collector piece. In every color of the rainbow. Yeah. In ancient folklore, these were known as snake stones because St. Hilda of Whitby turned a plague of snakes into these stones. And you can see in the circular kind of coiled shape where a snake might be, and you'll often see snake heads carved at the end of some of these materials in homage to, to that lore. Okay, I'm not looking, he's just laying that one out. I'm doing the unpackaging, because yeah. I did the packaging. <laughs> Can I look? But cool, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. I have no clue what it is. <gasps> that is too cool. Yeah, so you can see right there that they knew something was inside this rock just because of those little lines that came out. So what they do is they'll just put this against their foot and then they just hit it with a hammer until it splits. And when you're lucky, you can get a split good enough that you have made two fossils. Those are some of my favorite things is when it's hidden, because I would display it just like that, and someone would be like, hey man, your rock is broke. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 and then you get to do the reveal. That is too cool, I really like that one. Yeah, and to think how long ago this creature lived, yeah. how long it's been inside this rock. You know, if you're ever out walking on the beach and you see like a rounded rock like that, always check it. With the shape of that mollusk, you can see how it would roll in a circle down a hill and constantly, right. constantly yeah. be rolling and picking up and... Dirt. And yep, then it forms as this rock around it. And it's just the perfect shape. Okay, that's fine. this was the coolest little show and tell. I love it. Th All that's, this fossilized material. Yeah. Okay, Tom, time for a closer look. I'm going with this tooth here. It's just so unique. All the textures that are on it, the way it's raised up, it's amazing. It's just something that I'm taken by it. it it's, it's gorgeous. It's like little crunch berries on top of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. So what's your pick? Well, I love your pick, but I have to say this, this is my pick. Yeah. Because I just, one, I think the reveal is really fun. Yeah. You know, it, it looks like just a plain old rock, but then you open it up and it's this animal that has been trapped in here for however many millennia. Again, it's unique. It's a conversation starter and I think it merits a lot of attention and and all. So take a closer look.
reminder, everything on the table minus the Meg tooth is for sale, so we'll put the links in the description so you can check those out. Tom, thanks again for coming on the show and showing Thank us you. these awesome pieces. Oh, absolutely. I have the greatest job in the world. It's so fun. I don't fun. care to say it to anybody. It's so, so fun, and we really appreciate it. Let us know in the comments if you get any of these and which one was your favorite. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.